have the 49ers handled the Debo Samuel situation correctly so far? Well, um, I don't know what I don't know how they could have handled it. I, to me, to me, Grant, I, I'll point you know me, I'll point the finger if the finger needs to be pointed. I don't know that it's if I'm pointing the finger, I would uh, to me, they got here situationally. They used him the way they wanted to use him based on trying to win football games in the present. I don't know that they pl- they really thought it through from, hey, if we use this player as a running back, that almost guarantees that we have to pay him at the top of the scale as a wide receiver because we're shortening his career. And we're going to basic everybody who's at all in his ear is going to tell him that. And so then he's going to be that much more entrenched in his position that he needs to be paid as a top wide receiver right now because we're flirting with his mortality as a football player. We're shortening his career. So he's got to get his money up front. So if their whole plan was to not pay him commensurate with the top receivers in the game, then to use him as a running back probably was not wise because it just basically demands that his agent says, you know what, you want to use my guy on – short yardage on third and one, fourth and one, run them through the A-gap, fine. But pay them top tier so then at least we can look each other in the eye and say, hey, you know what, we're getting paid at the top of the scale. We're going to do whatever the team wants to do because we're all about winning. So I, to me, there's a little bit of a disconnect between how they utilized him as a player and what their strategy was to pay him you know, on the contract. So uh, who, uh, to me, I blame the situation. I blame Trent Baalke for signing Christian Kirk. Uh, the the market, I think, for receivers exploded. All these things aren't necessarily have a blame attached, but I don't know that the that Parag and Kyle talked about the ramifications of using him so so completely as a running back from that Arizona game on, and what that would mean to the contract negotiations. What I think is interesting is how the Niners are trying to spin the narrative now. And the way they're trying to spin it is, well, we don't understand Debo's issue. We were willing to pay him. Debo's great. Debo's elite. We don't want to give up Debo. We want to pay Debo. Debo just won't negotiate with us. Debo has some issue. It might be personal. Maybe he doesn't like California. It can't be us because we're great and we love Debo and we want to pay him. And we have nothing but the best intentions. We love players. We love stars. We're pro player team. Debo is the one that he's going to have to say something eventually because we don't understand. That's pretty much their they're playing dumb and they're making see they're making Debo seem like he's an emotional, immature, diva, selfish, all those things without saying it. We love Debo. We just don't know where he's coming from. I don't really think that's true. I think I know where Debo's coming from. I think he's treating the Niners like Kyrie Irving treated the, Cle- the Cleveland Cavaliers. I don't want to be here anymore. I know Prague. I know you do business. I don't like the South Bay. I don't like the tax. It's really expensive. You were going to have to make it worth my while to stay here. I'm a I have no loyalty to you guys. I'm a businessman. You, you, you're not going to come through for me. I'm at, let's just skip the whole charade. I mean, players do this all the time in the NBA. No, people, They don't really do it in the NFL, but I think D, Debo's acting like Kyrie Irving, essentially. And not in a bad way. It's just sort of taking control of his career. I think his agent has laid out the impasse to him. Hey, this is an organization that doesn't have a history of paying anything close to 70 million guaranteed. Gonna, so we can bang our head against the wall yeah. all day, or yeah. we can just say, you know what, guys, save your save your low ball offers, uh, you know, and just let me out of here. I think yeah. the, I think the agent correctly identifies that they're not going to bend and that Parag's philosophy is not going to change. And so it's a true impasse. And that means there has to be a divorce. Right. And the Niners, again, like uh, where I say they handled it incorrectly, they didn't anticipate this. They thought, you know, Debo is going to be like Fred Warner and George Kittle, and he's going to go through the process and we're going to, you know, make him sweat. But eventually we'll take care of him and it's just going to be on our time and on our schedule and we'll, we'll pay him probably twenty seven, twenty eight million dollars a year. Of course, the guaranteed money won't be that high and we'll have a bunch of outs and it'll be team friendly and it'll say that he's the highest paid non quarterback. But then a week later. Everyone's going to say, oh, Parag got him again. It's a team-friendly deal. Like That's what the Niners' plan was most likely, and Debo wasn't had no patience for it, and his agent had no patience for it. I don't think the Niners had any – I don't think they saw it coming. I don't think they're ready for the next generation of NFL stars is what I'm saying. These guys I don't think the are, Niners' offer it would stand up to an autopsy. 
No. Like if you if you said let's we Prague, give me let's see your best offer to Debo and let's put it on a piece of paper and analyze that can guarantee dollars and everything that goes with it next to Devontae's deal, next to Tyreek's deal, next to all the deals for the top receivers. And let's see if when we autopsy that exactly where it all comes out. I think they were banking on the same. The reason Warner and some of these guys have stayed is because they love it here because you can win here. And if you fulfill your contract, you stay healthy, you're probably going to make the same, make similar money. Uh, and that, and they look at it as a trade-off because they like being successful, but Debo's looking at it going, Hey man, you're asking me to go above and beyond and to really be two guys at once. Yep. And then you're going to lowball me and not give me the guaranteed money. Uh, no, and there's California on top of all that. And the California, I think, secondary, yeah. I but on, on top of all, all that, I'm taking home less money because right. it's California. I'm not going to buy my house here. I'm going to rent. That's expensive. I'm going to get a house back there. And the taxes are high. So it's like, and Parag's going to get me. So where's the incentive for, I I, I think that's kind of what, and again, I want to say, like, the Niners are trying to act like Debo's a one-off. Debo is just his own guy. He marches to the beat of his own drum. It's never going to happen again. Are you sure? Are you sure? I think this whole Parag, uh, low ball, hard ball negotiation style is a thing of the past, and it's going to make the Niners the Cleveland Cavaliers of the NFL if they don't get with the times. You can't treat these stars like this anymore. I don't think you can. You can't exist in a in an era where you have two ways to get better, free agency and the draft. You can't cut off half of your uh, of the way to procure talent because you have a reputation as you won't pay your guys. The Rams pay their guys. They're wearing jewelry. You're not paying your guys. You're not wearing jewelry. There, you can analyze it beyond that if you want, but the players don't. So, you know, ultimately it really comes down to um, Parag is great if you're about saving every nickel, but Parag is not great if you're trying to establish that you're um, a viable – your landing spot and free agency for the top talent around the league. This reminds me a little bit of the Jalen Ramsey situation. He was a little brash. Uh, he was a little ahead of his time. The Jacksonville Jaguars are a ridiculous franchise. I mean, they're awful. They don't make money. They're not a factor. They don't know what they're doing. They had Jalen. They were lucky enough to have Jalen Ramsey for a few years and talk themselves into him being the problem, right? They made him seem like he was a bad apple and the Rams are smart enough. Like, you know what? You don't know what you're doing. You don't know how to handle stars. We'll take them. And the Rams eventually win a Super Bowl. There are two kind of teams in this league. The teams like the Jaguars, who alienate stars like Jalen Ramsey and Debo Samuel, and teams like the Rams, who profit off of those aforementioned teams. Which one do you want to be, 49ers? Because right now you're looking like Jacksonville. The same. And what, what does Debo and Ramsey have in common? And this is where you have to break the bank sometimes for these players. They're not just great players. They are tone setters, yeah. tone setters. And yeah. when you have a tone setter, whether that's William Floyd in 1994 or mm -hmm. Debo Samuel in 2022, you know what? You don't let those tone setting type players out the door because those are the guys that ultimately they, they lead you out of the locker room and mm -hmm. they, they're the ones who, who are, you know, everybody else is looking to, to lead the team. This guy's one of the leaders on the team. I, I think you know, there'll be some pushback if they, if they move on from him. Right, but what did Jacksonville do with Jalen Ramsey? Even though he was a leader on that team too, that he's a, you know he's unprofessional. He talks back, all this stuff. Let's tra they traded him for two first round picks and try to replace him in the draft with C.J. Henderson, who's no longer on their team. So that's just a cautionary tale, uh, and it shows you how hard it is to replace truly special competitors, athletes like Debo and Jalen Ramsey. So no, I don't think the Niners have handled this correctly. But once, once. Debo took the nuclear option and burned the bridge. I think th since then the Niners have handled things correctly. And if they get the 10th pick from the Jets, they've, they'll have they make the best of a situation they messed up. Yeah. I uh, Unfortunately, um, letting great football players out the door, I don't care. You know, the, the, the yes, the Niners are armed with an army of yes men. Go defend that. Go defend that. Yeah. yeah it's hard to defend. Stephen Copland eight said, "Did the Niners deliberately lowball Debo? I guess we'll have to find out from Debo eventually. I wonder if he'll spill the beans. I hope so. Please." Ryan Niner says, "With Debo style of play, is his career most likely going to be shorter? Running backs have a short shelf life. I understand wanting the money now. That, I guess that's what I'm asking you here. Like, if you feel that Debo is 
is never going to be as good as he was last year. Maybe you don't give him the long-term extension. I mean, maybe the Jets are are doing this because everyone's job is on the line over there, and they just need one good year out of Debo so they can stay employed. I mean, what do you think? It's New York. I mean, Joe yeah. Douglas is in year three. Right. Um, there's he's six and twenty-three. They were right. three and fourteen this last year. They get the longest playoff drought in the league today. They haven't been to the playoffs for eleven years, and they've got a young quarterback that people are already saying is a bust. And Robert Sala is already being, you know, said that Robert Sala is failing. I mean, the dial is, of speed is turned up in New York, and you have to produce. And he's looking at the draft going, you know what? I could take this receiver. I could take that receiver. But they may bust. If I trade for Debo, I know I'm getting a star. So they're taking a lot of the guesswork out of the – they have draft picks, but they need to win. And they're taking the guesswork out by trading those draft picks for Debo. Richard Sherman said the Niners should trade Debo for a, that top 10 pick and a Pro Bowl player. I understand where he's coming from. It's nice to get one proven commodity for someone and not just total unknowns, but I don't think they're going to get that. I mean, we I saw yesterday that, that the Jets are preparing a godfather-like offer for the Niners. I'd like to know what that includes. Does that include Quinnen Williams? If so, I'm interested. Does that include Mekhi Becton? Uh, I, I, I think I'd be interested. You know, I'd like, does that mean they're going to flip uh, Trey and, and Wilson? <laughs> you know, because we know uh, Kyle loved Wilson. Uh, is Debo going to force them to come off their quarterback? I don't know. I don't know what exactly a godfather offer is, but it's not the 10th pick in the draft if, for Debo Samuel. You better come a lot stronger than the 10th pick in the draft. Hey, Larry, you want you want 50,000 views on a, on a video? Make <laughs> yes. a two-minute video saying, and the title is, Will the 49ers Trade Trey Lance? to the Jets for Zach Wilson on draft night. Boom. <laughs> that's, the, that's the video. It's a video. We'll just explode. Yeah, so absolutely. I Ricky said, that tonight, tonight. Oh, do that. Tonight. Do that. Uh, Ricky says, if we get a King's ransom for Debo, would you consider it a failure since Debo was traded before porn star Jimmy or a success since we got so much in return? Good question. I think the way that the, the fact that it got to this part, to this point is a failure. What they've done since Debo Samuel burned the bridge seems to be the best they can do. Is that fair to say? Yeah, I mean, to me, it, it, it's it's again a situational. Once Debo showed that he's really better as a running back than as a receiver, and he is, um, then to me, then it, then the system's working against you. Then you can't extend him. You can't pay him as a top tier wide receiver when you're planning on using him like Tom Rathman. You just can't. So uh, to me, it's smarter to trade. I would rather trade Debo and get a king's ransom then keep Debo at anything. I don't want to keep him at, I don't want him at 70 million and I don't want him at 50 million because at 50 million, he's unhappy and he doesn't want to be, he resents me handing him the ball. I don't want that resentment, but I don't want to pay him 70 million. So my only option is to trade him. Uh, Little or Stewie says Christian Watson would be the best first round pick number 10, because if Trey hasn't played a season in years, wouldn't the best option be Watson because they're old teammates. I've heard this a lot and this has come up because of uh, Jamar Chase and Joe Burrow, I think the reason they're such a good combination is because Jamar Chase is great and Joe <laughs> yeah. Burrow is really good. I, the fact that they were roommates is probably really low on the list, and I don't think that Christian Watson is Jamar Chase. No. so I like I Christian mean, Watson. I, I Seriously, if they, if they could get Christian Watson as one of the three or four draft picks and turn it into Christian Watson in round two, like you took Christian, Christian Watson, Grant, 38 or 35 or whatever that pick is, yeah, yes. I like it, but you're not. If you take him ten, you're you're out of a gig. You're definitely out of a gig. Richie says the picks we get back for Debo will help the team get better. Trey's ability to use the entire field will make up for Debo's loss in productivity. Here's the thing: this trade will allow the Niners to say they, you know, didn't trade as much for for Trey Lance. They're recouping assets that they gave up for Trey Lance. But what would really help Trey Lance is Debo, <laughs> not the picks. I'm just saying. But this is how they're going to make the Trey Lance trade more palatable. Yeah, we gave up a lot for him, but we got some picks back. Not from trading Jimmy like we wanted to, from trading D. Yeah, I agree with all that.